What's up YouTube, Maven here, and Outlaws Thunder Junction is finally live, and we're kicking things off here in Modern with the brand new Avon Interrupter. And uh, if you are new here to the YouTube channel, just finding it because of Thunder Junction, just know that we do Modern every Monday and Pioneer every Friday, and when a new set comes out, we like to use all of the new cards in some wacky brews in Modern and Pioneer, so if that's your kind of thing, I hope you stick around for more, hit that subscribe button. and. I tried to really mess around with this card and do creative things with it. I tried it in a bunch of different like shells. I tried to do it in a version where you use um, like Hushbringer or not Hushbringer, like um, what is it called? Dranith Magistrate, because Dranith Magistrate doesn't allow opponents to cast spells from anywhere other than their hand. So if you exile their spell with Avon Interrupter's ability, they won't be able to cast it because it it's not from their hand. Anyways, what it does, I, I should probably read it first. That'd be a good idea. Three minutes, two, two, flash flyer. When it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. It becomes plotted so they can cast it later for two mana for, yeah, from uh, exile in a later turn. And uh, this is basically like another copy of Spell Queller. And yo, what's up, Angel? It's basically like another copy of Spell Queller. So you could technically do a blue white taxes deck where you have this and Spell Queller and then also Teferi so they can't cast the spell off Spell Queller and just be super disruptive of cells like that. I decided though to put this into Orzov taxes because the spell that is plotted becomes exiled. Therefore, if you use Wasteland Strangler, you can put the card that is plotted into their graveyard and kill a creature or give a creature minus three minus three so that's a nice little one two combo right there um like completely counter a spell and kill a creature that's that's pretty good value and it's good against a few things right now like it can be good against like anything is it or like yogmoth combo anything with ragavan you know stuff like that and the classic combo with the wasteland strangler is tide hollow sculler you exile a card from their hand and you can then uh, eat it with wasteland strangler kill something so some value there you can also exile some things with skyclave apparition honestly brutal cathar would be you know better because like for killing creatures specifically but this just has the um versatility of being able to hit like non-land permanence so i don't i don't really like skyclave apparition but you know we got to have that those options you know and in typical taxes fashion, we have Leon and Arbiter along with Ghost Quarter as well as Volatile Fault to kill lands. And that's kind of weird because we're running Stoneforge Mystic, but uh, this is fine. Like if you violate it and you can afford to pay your own Arbiter's tax or you can just play this before you play Arbiter, you know, it, it works out. Taxes decks run both of these for a reason. You can make it work. And then the, the equipment we have to fetch out here is Sword of Fire and Ice or Cauldra Compliant. Of course, those are like the two main ones. And give her runes to protect our creatures. Since we're in the color black, gotta have the set of Orcish Boa Masters. Kill some cheap things. Also tax our opponent for drawing more cards. And then that looks like that is basically it. We got 23 total lands. And onto the sideboard here, we got Leon and Relic Warders. Another thing that can exile a thing for the Wasteland Strangler to then eat. And then um, it can deal with artifacts and enchantments, which is good like Urza's Saga and stuff. And then Sanctifier and Vex for the Graveyard. And then we got the Battle of Bywater to kill all creatures with power three or greater because nothing we control other than Wasteland Strangler is power three or greater. So it can be like a one-sided sweeper, kind of. And then we got Cabal Council of Allocation against anything heavily spellcasty to tax them and like drain them and gain them whenever they cast a spell. And then Damping Sphere to shut down things like Tron, which has risen a lot back up in popularity, as well as Amulet Titan, and also good against Izzet decks as well. And with that, we are ready to get on to the gameplay. But first, before we do, as usual, we give a quick little shout out to our sponsors. This video is sponsored by TCGPlayer.com, the go-to marketplace for anything magic related from deck boxes, card sleeves, play mats, and more to any MTG singles in any version, language, or condition with a massive variety of sellers from all across the nation so you can make sure you always get the best prices to fit your needs. You can find them in the deck list link down below. Just click Shop TCG Player at the top to be redirected directed to the main site and anything you purchase through that decklist link will help support the channel. And this video is also sponsored by Mana Traders, the 
you often wonder how us content creators are able to stream hundreds of decks on Magic Online over the years, wouldn't it cost a fortune to buy all those cards? Well, the reason it's possible is because we use Mana Traders. This way, you're able to rent all the cards you want on MTGO so you don't have to go broke buying them all. So if you're planning on playing Magic Online, it's definitely in your best interest to check out Mana Traders. There's a link in the description with the code for 10% off. And now let's resume the video. Real Gangstar is our first round opponent and we are on the draw. And that is a one lander, but we're on the draw. I got a giver. We're on the draw and I have a giver. Are we seriously risking like the very first turn of the entire stream? <sighs> turn one giver is good and I draw land. I have two turns to draw a land. I have 23 lands. And then I can stone forge and protect it, get college. I'm keeping it. The upside is there. We're risking it right off the bat. Okay, so there's a chance they just have counter spells. Giver again. I mean, two givers is pretty good, but we're not going to be able to hold up against sweepers. That's a problem. Just please don't be. I don't want to fight blue white control first game of the day. Please don't. Please don't. Still new here, kind of. I mean, but you've been lurking for like four years. Thought scour. Okay. So they are, what are they on? Is this, is this, is it? Because is it doesn't typically play Thought Scour, but I can see it. Also Delirium. Definitely feels like, is it Phoenix? Is it a uh, Merc Tide? And land? Yay, I got the land. Um, dude, Orcish Bow Masters is great here, but I just got to go Stoneforge and get the Cauldra. Because that just wins in like three ish swings. They didn't counter it. All right. Sword of Fire Nice is good against Is it, obviously, but I have Giver of Runes protection for my Stoneforge, so I have, I have faith. But they're going to have two removal spells, like Unholy Heat and Bolt, aren't they? <laughs> All right. Faithless Salve. What are they like? Oh, it's Phoenix. It is Phoenix. Okay. So this is the first stream in a while where I actually had to start off the stream with my nighttime lighting on. I have all three of my LED lights on. Because there is a huge storm passing over the Minneapolis area this morning. <laughs> and so it was just dark at 1 p.m., it's like night, dark as night. And I, I, I got my, my earplugs ready. If it starts thundering, I'm going to have to put on the earplugs because they can get pretty loud in the Midwest. Thunder in the Midwest ain't nothing like... All right, okay, I have to protect my Stoneforge. Ain't, oh, they're going to bolt it in response, aren't they? Okay, give Pro Red... All right, it sticks. So I'm going to be able to get Cauldra out. The thunder in the Midwest ain't nothing like the thunder on the on the coasts. I mean, except Florida, obviously, but the thunder in uh, Tornado Alley is pretty fierce and pretty loud. They got back their arc light phoenixes. I might be able to raise this, like if they'd. Fetch and get one more pain. It's a three shot. Oh, Demi Lynch as well? Oh my goodness. No way. Uh, yeah, I think that's GG. I think that's GG. Yeah, all right. I'm going to scoop it up here. I could stay back with Cauldra, but then, like, the Phoenixes are going to fly over and, like, two-shot me. I can, like... Slackwave one, but they're just going to hit me with another one and bolt me. Yeah. They, the opponent got, like, the god draw start there. All right. Kambal is insane here. Damning Sphere is pretty good, too, because it'll, it'll stop them from reanimating a Phoenix. Battle of Bywater seemed like it would have been great there. <laughs> All right. But uh, Sanctifier and Vec is good because it stops the Phoenixes in the grave. Um, I think I'm just going to do these. I'm not going to bring in Battle of Bywater. Clackleife hits like everything they got. Bowmasters is great. 
I don't like Tide Hollow because of the amount of like cheap burn they got. And then what else do I cut? Do I cut the Skyclaves? I'm not really a big fan of them here. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of Skyclaves here. I'm going to cut a couple. Cut one Wasteland Strangler and one Vial. What's up, Sea Biscuit? Okay, uh, yes, I'll keep this. We got Kambal with Giver Protection. Looks great. I may prioritize Kambal over Avon Interrupter here. I even got Ghost Quarter Arbiter as well. This is the kind of deck Death and Taxes typically preys on, but we're a version of Taxes without Thalia. That's the issue. And there's, there's been an uprise in non-Thalia Taxes decks. I'm going to save the Ghost Quarter as a surprise. So let's just go with Arbiter for now. Tax their fetches. And I have Giver Protection for Arbiter, so like if they have a fetch here, they're just n straight up not going to be able to use it this turn. Yeah, they're in the tank. Oh, no, they have a basic island. No, my, your favorite new card is the new Jace. I don't think that new Jace is very good. I think it's pretty slow. Like, you got to flash it in with the ley line. Otherwise, it's kind of mediocre, like, at, on turn four. On turn four, you play it. You plus it. It dies to creatures, and then you just get a free three drop or less on the next turn. It just... Like, yeah, you can use a suspend spell, but at that point in the game, is it really that impactful? I think that was Thunder. I thought I heard a motorcycle. That might have been Thunder. All right, let's go Kambal. Faithless Salvaging. You can exile Valky and cast Tybalt. Yeah, but you can do that in so many like different ways right now. Like, why do that on turn five when I can just use um like what is the three drop cast a free spell? It's like Sahili's expertise or something. And just cast it on turn three. Or do it on turn four at instant speed with, um, what's his face, uh, the Electro Dominance and like, but now, wait, yeah, yeah, Electro, you can also do it on turn five with Bring to Light, but also have way more tech and get anything in your deck. Yeah, Kari Zev's expertise, that's the one. There's so many better options, I feel, than, than, uh, than Jace. I could be wrong, but at the current moment, this is day one, and I believe that that card's going to end up being like $2 at one point. Metamorphose. Oh, we are taxing them hard with Kambal. Kambal is such a sleeper, like, modern card. You can't even main deck this card, in all honesty. Bolts has to hit Giver. All right, well, we will protect Kambal here with, uh... Okay, they have double bolt. They're killing Kambal. But now I can Ghost Quarter and then play another Kambal. Or I can even Interrupt or something. I think another Kambal makes more sense. Okay, let's start on Ghost Quartering the Spar Bluff. And then... Um, what do I do? Even interrupter. No, let's go Kambal. Let's go Kambal. 
They're staying back with the Arclight Phoenix. Rare day. <laughs> Kamal's so good. All right. On the draw, this matchup's a lot harder, though. Especially since they have, like, four Unholy Heats and four Bolt. Wait. Maybe they don't have Unholy Heat in there. Yeah, they scoop it up. Kamal's too much to deal with. All right. So we are going to run it back. Hopefully we get a Sanctifier in Vec this time. Because that would really help for the Phoenixes. Ah. <sighs> Now that I finally had some nighttime lighting for the stream, I, I try to turn on my LEDs in the background, uh, like along my floor that are back there. You can't see them, but they're there. And uh, it just doesn't show. It just doesn't show on the camera. Like they're not strong enough or I don't have them turned the right way. But I really would love to have that LED backdrop that I see like so many streamers have. But then in order to do that, I can't have these side LED lights because they illuminate the room too much. I can only have the ring light, really, but then it kind of makes a weird lighting that I don't enjoy. Okay, we have vials. We don't have Arbiter. We Okay, this is awkward. Double Sanctifier, Cabal, Bow Masters is so good, though. I, I have to keep that. Like though, That's a good series of cards. I can vial them in. I just hope I draw a black source so I can like play the Bowmasters and use the vial for my other stuff. Oh, and a damping sphere. That's so good, actually. That's very, very good. Consider. Damning Sphere also kind of ensures I don't get a Phoenix if my Sanctifier somehow gets Ghost Fired or a, or what is the other spell uh, Reality Hemorrhaged or like Cause Lex Returned. <laughs> All right. Yield to Vile. Yes. Oh, Arbiter. Oh, if I can get a... Oh, no, I'm going to Vile an Arbiter and double Ghost Corner then. That's going to be hilarious. All right. Let's just play Damping Sphere. They're going to have to respond with a couple spells. Oh man, if I can get this scenario perfect, if they can tap out and I can violin Arbiter and double Ghost Quarter them, that would be so good. That would be hilariously good. I got to turn off all out of yields because I may have to like vile in Sanctifier in response to the vile ticking up to three because I feel like I'd rather get in Sanctifier than Kambal. And that right there, that free salvaging, eats up one counter for the Damping Sphere. If they have Metamorphose into a one drop, then they can get back Phoenix here. And that would be unfortunate. Because Phoenix may just straight up race us here. Unless we can get out Kambal. All right. Looks like that's the turn. But unfortunately, that means I'm not going to be able to... Um, not going to be able to do the Arbiter Ghost Quarters because they could have up a bolt here. Okay, tick up Vile. Dang it, I was really hoping for a, a land there. All right, all I can do is pass and file in one of three things. Please tap out, please tap out, please tap out, please tap out, please. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do Arbiter. Blow up both their lands. Okay, I was considering Orcish Bowmasters, which some people would contemplate the better the better play. Ha! <laughs> oh yes, I I love I'm I'm a big fan of Death and Taxes mainly because it does this Ponza stuff and because I'm a big fan of Ponza and they scoop it up. Let's go. They probably like 
Officer of Visions, I guarantee you they top deck to fetch land and they're like, okay, screw this, I'm done. <laughs> All right, um, got there. Oh, the th I heard the thunder. I'm going to put in my earplugs now. Because, oh, that's loud. I got to put in these earplugs real bad. Okay. Now, when I talk, it sounds very, very weird in my head. <laughs> but the thunder can get, like, extremely loud. Like, it was thundering here, uh, like, a few weeks ago. And a couple times, it struck really close to where I live, like, maybe a couple blocks. And it literally, like, feels like an earthquake. It, like, shakes the whole building. It like vibrates the whole building. Okay, I'm gonna keep this where game number two here. Okay, I gotta update the record. Game number two here against W guys. Okay, start on Gala Shrine. Giver. So hopefully they're on a creature deck so that I can Tide Hollow Sculler and then like Wasteland Strangler devour the thing that Tide Hollow Sculler exiled, kill a creature. Wish the earplugs fit a little bit better. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Okay, well, we're gonna need Arbiter really bad. We're going to need Arbiter really bad here. Double Ghost Quarter is great. I may be able to just attack with Giver here. Tron doesn't really have too much removal. They sometimes play Dismember, sometimes Warping Whale. Okay, um... Huh, they got mine. So that's gonna complete the complete Tron. I think I gotta take Karn. And also keep in mind that Haywire Might cannot kill Tide Hollow Sculler because it only kills non-creature artifacts and enchantments. Okay, pray for Arbiter, boys. Pray for Arbiter. We need the Arbiter here. All right, attack for three. Hold up the Ghost Quarter. I know they have two mines, so now I know not to kill the mine. I got to kill the power plant. Okay, so I'm going to put a stop on their upkeep, I believe. I'd rather do it on the upkeep rather than in response to the map, because if I kill the power plant in response to the map, they'll grab another power plant, and then they'll still have four copies of tower to draw into, which is going to be a lot easier. Like, if I, if I instead go quarter on their upkeep after they find the tower, they're only going to have three power plants to find. So it'd be lesser odds if I do it on their upkeep. If I put a stop on my end step here, will I have priority after they finish fetching with map? Because usually it doesn't work like that. Like... Oh, they disconnected. All right, well, take the stop off here. Take the stop off here. And I guess we are not fighting Tron, which is kind of a shame because Tron is a good matchup for taxes. All right, going up against Boring Mulberry. I think we played against this person before. 
I like their avatar. That's that is it, dude. Kai Locks, visionary inventor. Uh, Mulligan the Zero Lander. And we will keep this one. We have Ghost Quarter and Volatile Fault for our lead in Arbiter, which is good. What are we going to bottom? I didn't even see if we're on the play or on the draw. Um, I feel like I got to keep all my lands because I need the Black Source for Orcish Bowmasters. Sword of Fire and Ice is great. Bowmasters is great. I think I'm throwing away sword because my plan here is to use up these lands here. I'm going to go down on land count. And I won't be able to afford to play sword unless I top deck another land, which I should, but I don't know. Rainforest. They're gonna risk they're gonna fetch in response to Arbiter. They're gonna subtlety it. No. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll I'll keep it on top. So it looks like we're gonna begin to crashing footfalls. And Arbiter should be great against Footfalls because they don't really do any important spells until they have three lands, but we're going to try to, like, deny that. And a lot of Taxes decks, like a majority of Taxes decks you see, run, like, a set of Archon of Amiria or, like, some amount of Archon of Amiria. We're not running any because I... Had to cut something to fit in the Avon interrupters. Um, but Archon of Amirias are great against uh, Cascade decks because obviously they can't cast two spells. They can't Cascade. Okay, so we know Arbiter, the Ghost Quarter is going to connect here because they don't have any one drop spells. So they're going to have to have another subtlety. Don't you dare. Oh, they have another subtlety. Oh, no, they're just cycling curator. All right, I'll kill their green source. I think the green's more important. Oh, you gotta be kidding. They top decked that too, because they had to cycle this first. Oh, uh, that's, that's just unfortunate. So it's living end we're going up against. Okay, um, what is what spell are they going to use to Cascade? Probably a, okay, I think I, I still got a Ghost Quarter here. So I gotta just hope they don't have basics. I gotta hope they don't have a basic forest. And I think I got a Ghost Quarter this because I need to deny the Charless Agent. Please don't have a forest. Okay, okay, okay. They don't have a forest. I just need them to not have a green source. I don't believe there's any Demir Cascade spell. So just don't have a fetch or anything. And they didn't have a cycle there. Great. All right. No. No. They have it. And shock. Oh, they didn't shock. They didn't shock. Let's go. They did not shock. Generous Ent. That's going to go find another green source. Wait, 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 wait a second. What do they get? Underground Mortuary. I can kill their green source again here, and Mortuary enters tapped. 
but unfortunately I can't use Volatile Fault right now. Dang it, what do I do? So I want to uh, kill another land. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna pass and hold up Orcish Bowmasters because when they cycle, I can punish them. What new Thunder Junction cards could they be running in there? Okay, play our Orcish Bowmasters. They may have to cycle in response here. They are not. Get our army. Another Bowmasters. All right. Player Arbiter. And we can bluff like we're going to use Volatile Fault. But we're just going to hold up Bowmasters. This is going to be tough. <laughs> I think we might have lost here. They're just a Cascade spell away from winning. Living End is like one of the most broken decks that's ever existed in modern. Okay. Uh, return target Nolan spell. You may cast an instant sorcery spell without paying its mana cost. Okay. Response kill off the their black source. It's their only black source. And I just gotta hope that they actually don't have the Living End. And do they have it? They do. Alrighty, onto the sideboard here. Damping Sphere can like tax a cascade, make it go off a turn later than normal. Um Skyclave Apparition really does nothing, so might as well bring in the damping spheres. Ball really doesn't do much. The Battle of Bywater can kill everything after a living end. So I think I'll bring in that. Oh, it seems pretty good. Wasteland Stringer do does nothing as well. Sanctifier and Vec doesn't exile, it only exiles black and red cards, so that really doesn't affect them. But Cabal. Maybe better than Wasteland Strangler. Wasteland Strangler has one more power, but they might have some amount of spells to cast. Eh. Just run it. So now I'm really um, hedging on that, uh, Tapping's fair, buying me one turn. <laughs> okay, um, we'll keep this. Do I just straight up go for the Stoneforge Cauldra like immediately? Just try to beat them by turn six? I'm kind of leaning towards going double Arbiter to deny fetches. Like, Arb like Arbiter, and if it resolves, then I follow up with Tide Hollow Sculler. Yeah, Cauldra, Cauldra's not going to be quick enough. I think I'm just going to go Arbiter and try to play the Disruption game. Never mind. They're going to get to decide what we can't do. <laughs>
What did they pitch? They pitched a grief to a grief. This is like, I think, the sixth game today, and we've only had one game that started on a vial. Only one game. <laughs> I take title of Scholar. I'm just going to go Arbiter. And uh, I always say that's my luck, because like whenever we go up against an opposing opponent playing a vial deck, they always have turn one vial. But not me. I can be six games deep, four in the deck, and, and not get one. <laughs> And then, funny enough, when we do finally get a vial opener, it's going to have two vials, or even three. <laughs> We're going to have two vials on the opener and draw the third one. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Cycles of Street Wraith. All right, no plays this turn. I, if I play a second Arbiter, then I'm pretty much locking myself out of ever using Stoneforge. But I think it's worth it because if they have a fetch next turn, they will be able to afford to pay for Arbiter and I don't want to allow them to do that. I just want to completely shut down fetches and not let them get to three mana. Or four for that spell they used on us last game. <coughs> okay, they got a subtlety trying to protect their fetches. Feels like my lighting from this side is darker. Over here, the, the light's closer, it's a little brighter. Do we want to keep this Arbiter? Um, I think... I think I will keep the Arbiter because while they will be able to use a fetch this turn, they won't be able to afford to pay four for their next fetch. They'll only have three lands. And like... I really have very, very limited answers to Living End, and so I gotta take every, everything disruptive I can get. If I have to bank off of two Arbiters to get there, then so be it. They could also cycle the Generous End here. Ah, oh, they didn't know how it worked. They didn't know how it worked. You have to pay for Arbiter first and then fetch. I think they might sc shame scoop to that. That feels like a shame scoop to me. They didn't realize. They didn't realize. That's a mistake people make on MTGO. I've made that mistake myself. Well, that, that's kind of sucky, because it feels like this isn't really a legitimate game anymore. <laughs> I could just attack here, because they're not really going to have spot removal. Because if I attack for five twice, then Bowmasters finishes off the game with a ping. Yeah, that's a shame scoop. And we run it back. Avon Interrupter is our number one disruption piece here, I feel. Basically a counter spell. But that still allows them to cast it for free on the next turn. Hey, double Avon Interrupter. That can, that can save me two turns. But other than that, this hand really doesn't have anything like that'll really stop them. 
but I think I still keep it. I'm going to need to find a Wasteland Strangler. <laughs> and like eat the plotted card. Yo, triple aim and interrupter. That may just be enough to get there. I can stagger the cascade for three turns in a row. And just beat them down with like two power dudes. I think that might be enough. And they're fetching everything they can before I get down an Arbiter. <laughs> they're fetching while the fetching's good. I think I might be able to take out these earplugs because I haven't heard thunder in a bit. Maybe I haven't heard the thunder because I'm wearing the earplugs, who knows? I'm gonna attack here. I really don't feel we need to leave up giver protection in this matchup. If they do have removal, it's probably gonna be a sweeper. Living End is basically their sweeper. Oh, I could have responded with Orcish Bowmasters. It wouldn't have worked though, right? Oh, it would have, it would have worked. But I screwed up. Oh, no. They're able to get that off before I have even an interrupter. Dang it. Well, they get two Street Wraiths and a Charless Agent. And I don't think I'm going to be able to race that. Yo, Mistaken69, thank you for the raid with the party of 32. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you here. How are you ending your stream right now, Mistaken? Outlaws of Thunder Junction is out. Don't you want to, like, play new stuff all day long? Uh, what, what new cards were you trying out in what format? Was it standard on Arena? Uh, as you can see, we have three copies of the new card we're playing. Uh, we are playing uh, Aven Interrupter in a Death and Taxes deck. And as you can see, Living End just happened, and it is not going well. But we are 1-0 currently. We did win our first matchup against... Um, is it? Is it Phoenix? All right, is there is there a theoretical chance we could race... Eight power. I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think we're gonna have enough. Testing smuggler surprise in modern. What is smuggler surprise? Can we exclamation point card smuggler surprise? It is one green instant with spree. And put up the two creature cards. Oh yeah, that one. You can put two creature cards into play. I, I thought about Bruin with that, but the more and more I thought about it, I was like, there's already a bunch of effects that already do that. There's no point. Uh, were, were you putting in Xenogod and Emrakul? Just an amulet? Putting in Titan and Colossus, or whatever the the seven drop guy is. Card sucks. Yeah, because there's already like Summoning Trap, there's a CV Unwritten, there's Tooth and Nail, there's Dramatic Entrance, there's Lucka, there's Indomitable Creativity. Like, you already have things that kind of do that. So I feel like that card's not really worth. All right, I don't think we're going to beat this. Um, 
Let's kill their black source. I may just need to hold this back to chump block the, uh, I should have actually blocked the Charlotte's agent earlier and then two Avens can block this. No, I'm just going to swing. I don't know what I can top deck that would allow me to, to defend against these guys, but I just got to hope that I'm forgetting something. <laughs> All right, they got their black source back. Yeah, we're wasting our time. I'm just going to scoop. We're not beating this. What were we going to get? Bowmasters, Vile. Yeah, we weren't getting there. All right, we are now one and one. Moving on to game number three. Okay, I think I can take out my earplugs now. But if I hear thunder again, oh yeah, it definitely sounds real stormy outside. Okay, I may need to put the earplugs back in if I hear thunder again. Okay, then I need to also keep an eye on tornado watch. Hopefully a tornado doesn't spawn. All right, I'll keep this. We have a lot of, of strip mines here. So hopefully I get an Arbiter. Um, looks like I'm gonna need a black source here. Is it, is it again? Okay, well, Bowmasters is good against Is it? It looks like it is Is it? But the last Is it deck we played against was uh, was Phoenix, and this one is probably going to be Merktide. So I guess we still got to play the matchup. Valky, so they are playing a new Jace. All right, so what what are they taking? Probably Bowmasters, I'd imagine, because it kills Valky. They do take the Bowmasters. Okay, I'm tempted to just Volatile Fault their Black Source here. Um, yeah. I'm fine with that. And they do not have a swamp. Good. All right, let's try to trade off our giver of runes for the Valky. That can become a copy of Bowmasters. Okay, they're going to respond and kill off my giver, I think. With push, yeah. Yep, they push giver. Valky gets through. And tick up here. Another vial. All right, ghost quarter. I want to kill their black source again, but I can also play a wasteland strangler. I don't think I'm in any rush to play a wasteland strangler. So I think I'm just going to strip mine their land, see if they have any more basics. They have no more basics, so that was successfully a strip mine. Oh, no, I could have played the Aether Vial. Dang it. Oh, yeah, that was some loud thunder. I need to put the earplugs back in. 
Okay, you guys probably cannot hear the thunder because my background noise reduction is so strong and good. But believe me, it's there. Oh, they have another. Who plays three of the same shock land in modern? I, I see noobs make that mistake a lot. I'm not saying our opponent's a noob. They may have a reason to run three watery graves. And like, I don't know, unless I see the list. But you should never run more than two of a shock land. Especially if it's just a two color deck. Like, your, your colors are fine. But I, I know I know a new modern player when I see somebody run four of the same shock land in a deck in modern. And there's a Merc Tide. Uh, we can kill Merc Tide here with the Wasteland Strangler. I can also strip mine them, but I think I got to kill Merc Tide here. All right, we're going to put Scalding Tarn back in their grave and then play Ghostly Quarter and play another Wasteland Strangler. Kill off Murktide. Putting Scalding Tarn in their grave. I don't think I'm going to trade for Valky. I, I'd rather have my attackers here because they're at 11. They fetch for a steam vents. Faradane. All right, where's the new Jace? And I, I would be actually surprised like, if they have the new Jace because mythic rares are like borderline impossible to get in the first like couple hours. Like the, the set has been out for like, I would say three hours now. And getting your hands on like a set of mythics right now, like this close to the release is like crazy. Silent Clearing, and looks like Arbiter's not going to work here, but it actually will because they, they have no more basics. I can just strip mine them. So let's go for Arbiter. And what color do I want to strip? We're going to Counterspell. Um, I feel like stripping the Black Source. We haven't seen any lightning bolts yet, so maybe I strip the red source. Hmm. Black allows them to play more Death Shadows. They could have bolts in there. Yeah, I'm stripping the red. And I have to hold up double blocks for Death Shadow. I was not expecting Death Shadow in their deck, I'll be honest. Seeing Valky, I thought it would just be a Jace mid-range deck. Okay, I think I take I think I take the risk here and double block. I think. Because if I just take five and go to ten, and then I attack them for six and put them to two, they're going to have lethal. I think i got to try to kill off Shadow. Some people may think this is... I, I, I guarantee you a majority of people will probably see this as the incorrect play. Um, but I don't know. It's just what I feel is right in the moment. And they have another one. Exactly why I was considering strip mining the Watery Grave. Like, where were, these, where were these Death Shadows the whole game? They had the opportunity to play them for like three turns now. We're just barely seeing them come out. Yeah, I think that's going to be game. I don't really have any main deck removal other than the Wasteland Strangler and the... Uh, and the... Uh... Oh, I do have Skyclave Apparition's main deck. Okay. Maybe I could have played it out, but... um. 
I think I'm gonna bring in Sanctifier and Vec here because it's it's pro black, right? Yeah, so I can block Shadow all day. Some ball seems great here. Battle of Biowater seems okay. Oh, I hear the thunder picking up. Wasteland Strangler can kill Valky, but like that's literally it. Maybe I cut Wasteland Strangler because it has anti synergy with Battle of Biowater. But it has good synergy with Avon Interrupter, so I don't know. And then, uh, what else to cut? Let's go one Avon Interrupter. And uh, one Vial, one Tide Hollow. And one Giver. Okay, I have Arbiter plus Ghost Quarter. No way to protect it. And if Arbiter dies, then I'm really doing nothing if I don't find a third land or a black source. If I do find a third land, I can Avon or Tide Hollow. Cauldra's a dead card. This feels awkward, but I don't want to get like thought seized and basically be put down to five. This 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 hand could shape up to be terrible or shape up to be good. I think I'm gonna mulligan. I want to get a sanctifier in Vec or something. All right, we'll keep this one and ditch one of the Avens. At least Giver makes me feel a little bit better. And Dismember. Black Source, come on. Yay. Uh, but if I play it on the black side, then I can't do Avon Interrupter. But I think I have to, because I'd rather play Tide Hollow plus Cumball. All right, Bowmasters doesn't kill anything. Press of Iteration, Drown, Drown in the Lock, Death Shadow. <sighs> I think I take Drown in the Lock. Maybe I take Shadow. No, probably the removal, because then, like... I'm going to take Death Shadow because I currently don't have enough cards in my graveyard to actually for them to actually use the Drown in the Lock of my guy. So I'm just going to hope they don't have any interruption or some kind of way to put a card in my grave. Some ball. And getting for two. I mean, what do they have? What is this? What do they draw? Oh, of course, Bowmasters. So they're going to double block and get back there. Oh, of course, they can just do that. I forgot. <laughs> All right. Well, I kind of got myself there. And now they have Drown in the Lock available. Oh, I just saw lightning. I just saw lightning. It begins. The thunder's already been kind of loud, but it's it hasn't even started yet. Just going to get louder. And there's a Thoughtseize. Oh, that's that's some loud lightning. I don't know if you heard that. Wait. OK, my mic's working. I was just making sure. A shadow. All right, all right. They if they cast three more spells, they die. So are we gonna die to the shadow before that? Okay, I'm gonna kill off their red source.
play vial and pass. But now they can drown in the lock and kill Kamal, go to three, and then I'll be squared. Okay, I can still top deck Sky Clay Apparition, so I shouldn't scoop yet. I just found another Steam Vents off the top. Lucky. You know what card I think is severely underplayed is Sedgemore Witch. It's, I believe it has Ward Pay 3 Life or something. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. Like Ward Pay 3 Life and it has Menace. Like it's a pretty good aggro creature. For like a tempo-y like mid-range deck, I feel like it could be pretty solid, but like nobody plays it. So like I, I can imagine like a just like a mid-range a mid-rangey tempo deck that has like the Sedgemore Witch and the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger because they have like pretty strong ward effects. All right, iteration finds a free preordain. Too bad Cabal's not taxing this stuff. I can never be a Death Shadow player. Being at such little life all the time would, I don't know, make me feel scared all the time. I'd be like, oh, I'm so close to dying, but I did this to myself, so I don't know. Arbiter. Of course, they just had to have another shadow. All right, pass. Okay, I see a route to victory here. I see a route to victory. So I take 10. And then I vial in. Wait, they didn't even use their. Oh, they did use their. Oh, they found another shadow. OK, well, if I top deck another Skyclave, I can still get there. So here's the plan. Top deck Skyclave, kill that, swing for two or swing for four. And they have to chump one and go to two, uh, go to one. They lose this. And then I just chump the Death Shadow on the backswing and then win by swinging again. But the opponent just made things a lot harder. Yeah, the rain is just like pounding against my window right now. It's kind of crazy. All right, Engineered Explosives on zero. Why zero? And Skyclave, I'm going to take Vile up to three. Sanctifier, that is great. That is great. That can block a shadow all day long right there. No! All right, I'm skipping it up now. Opponent got a pretty lucky draw there. Triple shadow. What are you going to do about that? If they had two shadows, maybe I had a chance. A triple shadow is just ridiculous. So opponent, opponent lucked out there and we're now one and two. Okay, game number four here against DZ and um, to the YouTube video, it was just like a snap to the next game. But what really happened in reality is I needed to stop the stream for half an hour because there was a tornado passing by. Um, that's just how it goes in rural, rural areas, you know? In the Midwest. All right, so we're going to keep this. the The tornado is still around, but like, I don't think it's going to be an issue here. So it's probably fading soon. 
So I decided to put the stream back up, get out of the basement. All right, so let's start on Vile. Did you unleash a tornado in the modern meta? Uh, hopefully, currently one and two, uh, but our opponent got like a super god draw. Like, uh, I feel like our two losses were two opponents just getting extremely lucky. <laughs> All right, so Goblin Guide will be able to block that next turn. They gave us a free Godless Shrine, too. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to shock myself here. Okay, I don't have to shock myself if I play this and pay one life, but it might be worth my while to shock myself. It hurts, it hurts, but I gotta do it. Now we're hoping to avoid searing blood and searing blaze. Um, but if I hear the tornado siren go off again, then I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to go again. Oh, dang it, I forgot I just turned on the air conditioner. I have to turn it back off because I'm streaming now. All right, I'll do that here in a second. One second, F6. All right, Orcish Bowmasters. Deal one damage to Goblin Guide. They give us a free land, so I don't have to shock myself again. That's good. And block the like Goblin Guide. Oh, the sun's coming out. The storm's gone. The storm is gone. Okay, I got to turn off my LED lights because it's going to get bright in here now. All right, Snoop. So it's goblins. It's not, it's not burn. All right, tick up. Wasteland Strangler. They currently have nothing in exile. Um, I probably should just get out the sword. And just hold up blocks. And block and give pro red. I can't F6. I can't F6 because I, I have to hold up, I have to hold up giver. Pile driver. They can't really attack with everything because I can eat the loyalist. All right, so block and give pro red. And then just untap and vile. Put it to three. Get an arbiter. All right. Let's play silent clearing to equip the sword to Orcish Bowmasters. Play. Actually, don't play arbiter yet because there's a chance I draw something better. Go to combat and attack with the Bowmasters. And, um,. Kill off, kill off Snoop. We draw a vial. All right, play Arbiter. Pass and hold up Stringler. Okay, I have to turn off these lights. I was moving like a goblin. Another snoop, and then they get a free snoop off the top. I gotta deal with these snoops. Oh, there's a goblin king too. They really can't attack here. I wanna exile a card before I use Strangler. I really wanna exile a card first. I'm not gonna put in the Wasteland Strangler. 
There we go, Tide Hollow Sculler. Please, please tell me you have something for me to exile here. And no, they don't. That was going to be so good. Okay, um... I guess go to combat, attack with the Orcish Bowmasters. Kill off, uh, kill off a Snoop. Oh, Skyclave Apparition, let's go. Oh, this is perfect. Cause I, I exile a, I exile a card here. Um, all right, exile Snoop. And now when they when they slam the Goblin King, I can just Wasteland Strangler it. Oh, they scoop. All right. So. Wait, why did I say they had nothing in exile? All right. Well, anyways, um, bring in Sing to Fire and Vex, and that should be all she wrote. Um, all right. What do we want here? Uh, Arbiter really doesn't do anything here. It helps like with my ghost quarter and volatile, whatever it's called, but they don't really have fetches on their own behalf. Okay, it's very bright. Now I gotta put my green screen. I had to go from turning on my nighttime lighting setup to start the stream because it was dark as night because of the storm to now having to put up my green screen to block the sun. <laughs> um, I still feel like cutting Arbiter is a correct play. I run it like that. I gotta put up my green screen. It is hot. Oh, I forgot to turn on my air conditioner. Now, I'm going to leave my air conditioner on for the rest of the video because it's hot in here. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of background noise whenever I speak, and I apologize, but I, I got to like turn it off for the beginning of the Pioneer video, and so I, I needed to get cool in here. Okay, I have Sword of Fire and Ice, which was proven to be very good, but I want a mulligan for Sanctifier and Vex. All right, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take this. So we can exile a thing and then, like, Strangler and kill another thing, but Bowmasters can be really good because they can kill off a Legion Loyalist and it can be a surprise blocker. So I don't know what I want. If I if I keep the two three drops, I'm going to take a beating in the meanwhile. But once I get to these. It's going to be really good. So. I'm tempted to throw the bow master away. I'm going to stabilize on like four life. All right, I'll do it. Now the sun went down again. See, that's why I should have kept the bow master right there. That is precisely why. Hopefully I draw more cheap things here. Another thing. I put the green screen. Oh, wait. Nope. It's getting bright again. I'll put it down a bit. It's down a little bit. Double, dude, double Legion Loyalist, a Bowmaster would have destroyed them. But at least we're not taking a massive beating because they're mana screwed. So I should have the opportunity here to do what I want to do with the Skyclave and the Wasteland Strangler. Goblin Guide. Cauldra is on top.
All right, Skyclave time. Kill off Goblin Guide, pass. Just don't have the rune felt. Don't go land into rune felt. They have tutors for their gobbos. Oh, goblin grenade. All right, so they get a 1-1. One, one. Okay, so the Flash Wasteland Strangler is going to be saucy. And I could hard cast a Strangler here, but I want to save it as a surprise so I can actually like get them and like get a free kill. So I'm not actually going to play a Strangler here. I'm just going to flash in a Strangler. They know I have one? How do they know? Oh, because they saw it with the Goblin Guide. A Braid. Okay. Well, flash in Strangler. Kill off Legion Loyalist. So there's a chance I can hard cast the Cauldra. <sighs> All right, I'm going to get greedy and I'm, I'm not going to play either of these cards. I'm going to wait until I can exile another thing and then use this to kill another thing. I need to put another card in exile. War and instigator. <sighs> Okay, that's a good thing to kill. All right, take one. Can I get another land? Nope, give her. Okay, I'll take give her. Kill off this. Play this. And attack for three. They should make a super mom card that's like three mana, like a three mana one, two or three mana one, three that can tap to give a creature or you protection from a color until end of turn. So you can like prevent you. So you can like fog a creature entirely. That'd be cool. Give me lands. I'm so close to this cauldra. All right. Wasteland Strangler time. Wait, why is this exiled under here? Is it supposed to work like that? Okay, nice. All right, attack for five. Got the protection back up. They are chump blocking. Follow up the vial and go. Wasteland Stranglers can be either really good or really bad. And this is one of those really good times. It should be called Super Mom. I mean, it could be called Power Mom or, or Fat Mom. A braid kills Skyclave Apparition, which I don't know why they'd kill that one. They're not going to get a token. Wait, well, I could have protected it. What am I thinking? I'm stupid. I could have protected it. Okay, one land away from Cauldra. I think we're still going to win anyways, but still. It was a misplay. Or a misclick, rather. Didn't click on time. Clicked through before I could think. I was too busy thinking of fat moms.
and they scoop it up. Nice. We got there. We are now back up to two and two. Can we go positive? Thought I heard the tornado siren again for a second. But it's not. Alrighty, final game here against Lucara77, and this is going to be a keep. Looks pretty good. Got the Leonin Arbiter plus the Fault. Can never go wrong with turn one Vile. Oh no, we're, uh, we didn't get Thoughtseize. Let's go. I thought we were going to get Thoughts East. Ooh, a Stone Forge. I kind of, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Arbiter first. Because I can violin the Stoneforge and afford to pay for my own Arbiter. And I want a Stoneforge once I have Giver up. Because I don't want Stoneforge to die so I can like cheat in Cauldra. Still ruin. Oh, <laughs> I see where this is going. They're going to use my own Arbiter against me. So they're like a mono black control, like a one ring deck or something. All right, we'll sack Arbiter. Yeah, so they're like a one ring shieldred, like broken deck, like Beseech the Mirror. It's gonna, this deck is crazy good. I can't believe it's not like top of the meta. Can't believe it's not meta at all. Like this deck is insane. All right, um, I'm just going to Volatile Fault their Field of Ruin, I think. Play Tap Land, Pass, and Levile and Stoneforge. Push. No push. At least I can Skyclave the One Ring. But then when it dies, look at a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> All right, EOT. Oh, they didn't have a land drop. Let's go. So this Cauldra should be good. Good to go, unless they specifically have two pushes. Edict. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Stoneforge. It's a Stone Luigi. All right, and Cauldra, complete. And take up Vile to three. Bowmasters. And put in good old Cauldra. And hold up both of our dudes to flash in. All right, this is looking good. I don't think I care about anything they play now. Like, there's no sweeper they could have in, like, in modern and mono black that could kill this germ right now. Um, actually, there is one card I believe that's like exile all creatures with two or less power or something. Is there like CMC two or less? Children edict won't kill it because I can flash in Orcish Bowmasters and stuff. March of Wretched Sorrow. Uh, sure. All right, flash in Orcish Bowmasters. I'm still going to hold on to Skyclave, so you never know what could happen. Avon, please. Ah, uh, it's hoping for an Avon.
All right, I think I will just throw out the Strangler for nothing here because I want to put more damage on the table. It actually puts lethal on the table. Xaxi's lethal. And say no. Yeah, the instant speed token. Free sack fodder. Bowmasters is just one of the most satisfying cards to play in, in modern, honestly. I haven't had a lot of opportunities to play it because I don't really play sweaty decks. But when I get the chance to play it, it's always a blast. And they are scooping it up. They got stuck on lands onto the sideboard here. Kambal seems pretty good. Um, Sanctifier and Vec is pro-black, but I don't know how much that's going to matter because they're going to have sweepers. Um, Wasteland Strangler is kind of cheeks here, but again, it does help me get that free value off Avon Interrupter, but still, it it's like, it's the cut. Um, Bowmasters can kill a Liliana that ticks down and also give me Flash Sack Fodder. Tidal of Scholar is always good. Um, Leonin Arbiter is okay. Um, Skyclave doesn't have a lot to hit. All right, I think I'll cut a couple Bowmasters. I think they don't provide enough here. Maybe I cut one Vile and one Bowmaster. Yeah, let's do that. I should have cut Arbiters. Arbiters don't really do much here. If anything, Arbiters are going to hurt me because they have Field of Ruins. But they would hurt themselves because they wouldn't be able to fetch either. So that'd be a strip mine for a strip mine. Okay, uh, yeah, double, double Stone Forge. Try to get down this Cauldra as much as possible. Got the, the Sanctifier. I'll take it. Just hoping to not get my Sanctifier Thought Seized on the first turn. If anything, my Cauldron might get Thought Seized. Bow Master's not as commonly played these days, yeah. See, this is like, to Magic players, we know that as the Phyrexian symbol. But that's actually like a letter in Cyrillic. Don't know what letter that is, but it looks like a letter. There's a letter in Cyrillic that looks exactly like the Phyrexian symbol. If anybody in the chat is of Eastern Europe, let us know what that letter is and what it what it's what it sounds like. Um, I'm going to go Stoneforge because I don't want my Sanctifier to get um, Shieldred's Edicted. Get our sword here. I understand why people play Shieldred's Edict, because it can, like, kill walkers. But that's not enough for me to, like... I wouldn't person personally play that card for that benefit. There's other cards that can do that. That just that card feels too, like, whiffable. If the opponent has multiple creatures, you, you're not going to be able to kill the one you want to. I'm not a fan of that card, even though it sees so much play, too, and I don't understand. Arbiter. Okay. Arbiter is free sack fodder. But if I go Arbiter and flash in Stoneforge, I won't be able to fetch. But it doesn't matter because I already have both of my equipments in my hand. So, and I, I don't want Sanctifier to die. So I'm going to bait with Arbiter, I think. It's fee in Greek. 
I'm pretty sure it's a Cyrillic letter. But maybe Greek has one that looks like that too. March of Wretched Sorrow, sure. Okay, so now they're going to have an edict up for my Stoneforge. I may just bait with Sanctifier because I feel like I really want the Stoneforge. I really want to get out that Cauldra. What's it going to be? If I lose Stoneforge, I'm never getting out Cauldra. Never. It's got to be the Sanctifier. It's got to be the Sanctifier. I can't risk the Stoneforge. I really want to get out the Cauldra. Okay. Um, play Sword of Fire and Ice. They have a Cabal Coffers now. So they have five mana Invoke Despair. Okay, thank goodness it's not Invoke Despair. It looks like another March of Wretched Sorrow. It's Shieldred. All right, but I have Shieldred's Edict Sack Fodder now. So, so the, the Stone Forge should stick unless they specifically have Spot Removal. And I untapped, let's go. All right, we're getting it out. Put it up to three, just in case we get an Aven or a Kambal. I lose two. And Stoneforge. Put in Cauldra. And put the sword on... Probably the germ. I feel like Sanctifier is the safer, safer bet. All right, go to combat, swing with both. They, they should be taking a hefty chunk here. All right, deal two damage to their face and draw a card. Volatile Fault. I take two damage from that and they're going to Orcish Bow Masters. I already drew the cards, too late, dude. Why is it dark in here now? The clouds came back. Oh man. I gotta turn my lights back on. I can turn this light on. There we go. That's better. Shieldred is such a monster at like just sustaining that they could just win even though I have this insane board. And they got coffers ticking up so they can... If they have the one ring here, it's just over. It's a giant X spell, March of Wretched Sorrow on Cauldra. No, on Stoneforge. They're going to gain a bunch of life. They're swinging for six, putting me down to seven. All right, I got to get Skyclave Apparition. Nope. All right, um, go to combat. Swing Sanctifier so that I can block Shieldred. I can go to one and live, but then I would die on my upkeep. Okay, so since I'm going to die in my upkeep, I think I just go for it and pray to top decks in Skyclave here. I think that's my only play. Actually, no, because I can, I can um, block with Giver. So I, I take... 
I can block there, block one of these, then I take one and go to one, and then, yeah. So I go to three here, and then I go to one on my next draw, I would be, yeah. Okay, but... I could have one more chance if I top deck like any creature. Oh no, because uh, Sanctifier is going to kill something, so I should be, I should be, I should live. Sanctifier is going to kill one of their creatures. I'm going to kill Orcish Bowmasters. Come ball. Ooh. Cabal might be okay. Ah, uh, but that triggers before that. It's dead though. Okay, so Giver of Runes. Volatile Faults. Use it there. Play Vile, and now I need them to cast the spell. And in response, no, wait, no, 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 I have to do this beforehand. I have to do this beforehand. Because I, I need this to be on the table before they cast the spell. So I'm dead. <laughs> so, so I'm just dead. Because I can't gain. Yeah, they're just going to pass a turn and then I die. I didn't think the Bowmasters would trigger, uh, like, even though it was dead. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I, I'm dead. The, like, if I had one more, if the Bowmaster didn't trigger, I, I could have actually won. This could have came in, punished them from casting anything. And I would have gotten an extra draw, which would have been Aven Interrupter. That wouldn't have been enough. All right. Well, it was close. Battle of Bywater can kill Shieldred. And um, Leon and Relic Warder can deal with the One Ring. Um, I should probably bring in a couple Relic Warders to deal with the One Ring. You got to go. All right. See you later, Shroom. Thanks for stopping by. All right. So Arbiter is getting cut here. Arbiter doesn't do enough. I got to turn my nighttime lighting back on. Okay, we're on the play. We got Sanctifier. So I'm gonna keep this. Sanctifier, turn to Sculler, Aven Interrupter. Finally, I get a dang Aven Interrupter. I, I don't think I've, I've, I have not countered a single spell with this today and it's already game five. It's literally game five and I have not used this a single time. That just goes to show how bad my draws are. <laughs> I have just not been drawing this guy. Oh, now that my green screen is all the way down, I can feel the air from the AC that's behind it just blown at me. It's fresh. What's up, the one epic Nate? Good to see you again. Sounds like commander luck. Pretty much. Nothing will ever beat my Flint of Boar incident, though. I, um, I've talked about this on the channel a few times before, but, um, um, so basically I played a tournament IRL. I believe it was a four round tournament. And before the tournament, I added in four copies of Flint Hoof Boar to my Gruel aggro deck. And I did not draw a single one the entire tournament. Like, not, I haven't even seen one in my grip the entire tournament. It was crazy. Okay, so we don't care about the troll. I'd probably take the Profane Tutor. Because that's what they can cast here. I can take the other Karn with the title of Sculler. So I probably don't even hold up Avon Interrupter here. Because I know their hand now. So I know that I probably just want to go Tide Hollow Sculler. Because, like, there's nothing for me to interrupt. I, we know they have nothing to cast here. All right.
Play another title of Sculler. March of Wretched Sorrow. I'm going to take that. I'll, I'll be able to even interrupt the Karn. We know they got nothing to do here, so I can take this turn to, uh, actually, I can hold up the, I can hold up the Aven Interrupter now and, and hit the Karn. But then the Karn's going to be able to be cast for free the next turn and grab the, the Ensnaring Bridge. So that kind of sucks. Maybe I should have taken the Karn. I feel like I might have misplayed. Yeah, I might have misplayed. I was probably supposed to take the Karn. But then again, they could have just wretched, wretched sorrowed my dude. So I had to do what I had to do. All right. Well, actually, no, no, because spells that are plotted cost two more, so they won't be able to ensnaring bridge that. Actually, no, they will, because they'll have five mana. And fourth land, Karn. I mean, at least I can say I used Dave and Interrupter today. All right, well, can't say we didn't use it. So now they can cast Karn next turn for two mana. And then they can have five lands. They can grab bridge, play bridge. But they'll they'll have a no, they'll have one card in hand. So yeah, they they're they're gonna be saved. I, I need to find my Skyclave Apparition or my Leonin Relic Warder. Double Sanctifier and Vec. So I guess we got a Volatile Fault here so we can get another White Source. Play Silent Clearing and do Double Sanctifier. And Attack. Oh, wait, why did I do this? They literally have a profane tutor that's about to come off suspend. Dang it, now they're going to cast a sweeper. The demon they're going to get the demonetization nation. Yep, and the very millisecond they cast demonetization nation, I'm just going to scoop. I didn't know they had profane tutor in there, so having Lean and Arbiter would have been good. And here comes the demonetization nation. And they're going to tap their their lands are going to turn sideways so quick. They're going to go tap, 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 and then just like insta cast this. Watch that. They're going to race to this. And tap, 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 tap. Crux of Fate. Yeah. Don't know what that is, but that's a sweeper. Demonetization Nation, and unfortunately, Sweeper decks are going to be the bane of our existence, and we went up against one there at the end. So we did not go positive, unfortunately. But we we got to at least use Aven, Aven Interrupter once. It's, it's just a three mana flash card. This card should be so easy to use literally every game, but we just hardly drew it. Like, there was one game where we drew it three times against a deck that didn't care about it because they were literally not even casting spells they were just cycling <laughs> so yeah like i can't believe that we didn't get the chance to use this card today because it should be very usable in like 90 percent of matchups but um still it's basically like imagine a three mana remand that just says get a 2-2 two -two flying token instead of drawing a card is basically what this is. So it's like not the most impressive thing in the world, 
the opponent's still going to be able to play the turn the, the same spell next turn for two mana so that's where you need to like do something about it so that's why i try to do a brew that had a drowned at the magistrate because then they wouldn't be able to cast that spell from exile with plot they can only cast spells in their hand with drowned at the magistrate and there's another card that does the same thing i would believe um and i i brewed this in blue white because you can also run lavinia and lavinia also stops them from playing that spell actually no no it doesn't now that i think about it but then you could also have queller spell queller so like when they cast that spell off of plot you can then spell quell it and then you can play it to fairy time raveler that stops them from playing spells at instant speed so it'll stop a spell they get off spell queller so it was just like a very disruptive deck and that was the other version i was gonna brew and play if it wasn't for me brewing this version because i felt like this version was a little bit cooler with the wasteland strangler strangler stuff to eat the plotted spell but i just felt like um there you, this deck really needs a situation to be right Whereas other taxes deck will always have something to do like a Thalia, typical Thalia version of taxes. Like imagine having Thalia, Avid Interrupter, Esper Sentinel and Spellcaller. Like that'd be pretty nasty. That's probably what I would do. There's a new, there's a kind of new card out you might be interested in. I think it's low key in commander. What? Well, if it's in commander, then I, it doesn't, not really relevant to this channel because we only do modern and pioneer. Um, do the sweeper cards that you mentioned destroy or just exile your board? board? They destroy. Demonetization nation destroys all creatures and they can't be regenerated. Anyways, yeah, th this card has so much potential and there's so many shells you can run it in. This is just the one I happen upon today. So like i know i didn't get a lot of opportunities to play it but you definitely should this this card's gonna be very annoying to play against and it's gonna be awesome so just give it a chance and brew with it because there's a lot it can go in something like 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 a flash deck something tempo we maybe something with I think it would be awesome with restoration angel because then you can like resto flicker this guy and exile another spell so it'd be cool and like anything like bounce like related something maybe because uh, like the other deck that I brooded in in blue white I had four copies of solitude and three copies of ephemerate it's because I was thinking you know obviously you want ephemerate solitude but it'd also be very awesome to ephemerate this guy so you can exile another spell and you can ephemerate your skyclave apparition to exile another thing you can ephemerate your stoneforge mystic to fetch another thing there's like a lot of like ephemerate fodder so that's something to consider as well yeah, kind of sad about how things went today and how lucky our opponents got today, but it is what it is. So that's going to do it for this one. For those watching on Twitch, stay tuned because we're still going to do Pioneer. Got an awesome deck in Pioneer that's definitely going to dominate, no doubt about that. It's going to do better than this deck. But for those watching on YouTube, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Again, if you're new here, stay tuned. we got a lot of Outlaws of Thunder Junction and Modern and Pioneer coming on the way every Monday and Friday. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you want to catch the gameplay live on Twitch, we do our streams every single Saturday afternoon. Hope to see you there. Twitch link down below. And with that, I'll catch you in Friday's video. See you later.